Welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert. I'm Steve Glenn. And I'm Paul Glenn. Each week we do a fast-paced editorial review of the Weekly Travel Alert and the Travel Week in Review that's sent out to 100,000 people via email. We've been doing this for 38 years, and we get the opportunity to share with you the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say, Paul. And uh, we're going to share with you all the action items in this week's program. And then also you and I get to put our two cents in. Sounds good. This week we have an exciting lineup that includes airfares are dropping like a rock. Number one. Number two. If you've got a long connecting flight, I've got three magical things you can do to make you feel like a king or a queen. And number three, Venice, Italy is going to charge Americans just to go visit. So those three items are going to be a lot of fun to talk about. All right, let's go. Headline number one in this week's weekly travel alert. Airfares are dropping like a rock this fall and winter. We uh, talked last week, Paul, about how we were seeing that some airfare sales came into the market. And sure enough, in the last seven days, we've seen airfares domestically drop 75 to 150 bucks round trip and internationally below $1,000 round trip for winter travel. So that's great news for travelers. Yeah, I think it's about time. I think for the last 12 to 18 months, everything's been out of control as far as pricing. I know I've got a meeting down in Oklahoma City in a, mo- in a month, and it was going to be $1,200 for that ticket. So hopefully that will uh, come down since I haven't purchased that yet, and I can take advantage of this opportunity. Or you may want to drive. <laughs> that's actually what I currently have uh, in my plans is I've got a rental car. So, <laughs> so that's great news, and I, I think uh, people are looking forward to that. I also uh, see that uh, internationally I look for a trip in uh, early part of next year into Rome. Italy and it was eight hundred and fifty dollars yeah. round trip. I think we got to take advantage of this. I mean, we got to figure out when we can get away and and go uh, take advantage of this opportunity because uh, again, it's been a long time since uh, loads have dropped and we've been able to to find a great deal. The next item on this week's weekly travel alert is I have three ways that I spoil myself when I travel and have a long connecting flight. This this week I traveled through Denver, and the first thing I do, Paul, is I jump off the plane, I run to the shoeshine guy in Denver, and they do an amazing job of shining shoes. I spend about 20 minutes shining my shoes. Get a flame out and put cream on your shoes and do all the stuff. You feel like a king. You do. It's amazing. (laughs) And Denver is the best place to get that done. And I wear cowboy boots. So when I go there and I sit down and they do that and they pull out this big old flame and start shooting stuff at you, makes you a little nervous the first time (laughs) they're shooting that at your your boots. But you do walk away with the best shine you'll find anywhere. The second thing I do is I look for a massage place because my when I'm traveling on a airplane seat, I get all bunched up in the back and the neck, and I usually do a 20-minute or 15-minute uh, massage, which is cool. And then I head for my gate, but I stop by Auntie Annie's and get that sugar cinnamon pretzel. And uh, that I tell you, that's like uh, the ultimate connection, those three things, shoe shine, Auntie Annie's, And then also get that massage. I can do without the massage because I'm not a massage guy. And I would argue you that a standard pretzel with cheese dip would top that cinnamon (laughs) uh, pretzel. Now, Venice, Italy, you and I talked about this last week. They're putting in a $5 fee just to visit the city. I mean, what are you getting for it? Nothing. But they're saying, well, this is our way to keep tourism down. So they don't get over tourism, which is called in our industry. But really, it's just a way to make an extra buck on a tourist. And you can imagine the bureaucracy to get that done. And and also, I think they're going to use that probably to allow certain people in the city at certain days and certain times. So some days they'll probably say, sorry, we can't give you a ticket because we're full in Venice. I think that's uh, another great reason for using a travel advisor to help you as you're putting that type of a trip together so that they can make sure that they get all that covered for you. But that's in addition to the new tax that's going to get put into place at some point next year as well that across, I think, 17 or 20-some countries in in the EU, they're going to have a nine-euro tax 
to travel to that. So you're starting to see, you know, we've, we've talked about how the U.S. government's trying to get rid of all these nickel and diming taxes. What well, looks like as we're going to get rid of them, the rest of the world is going to start plugging them in. The next headline in this week's weekly travel alert is really a funny story, Paul. It's a Delta's toilet trouble. Passengers in flight biohazard causes U-turn. And Paul, everybody's talking about this, but literally there's a passenger on Delta that was flying to Barcelona and they had a little case of diarrhea uh-huh. and they ran to the bathroom and didn't make it. And oh my goodness, it was, as one passenger said, this was the crappiest flight I've ever been on. Well, I think they hit that nail on the head with their uh, description of it. But, you know, I think that's one of those things. And I'm, I'm a guy that has a sensitive stomach. So it's one where, you know, I, I always think through and there are many times where if I know I'm going to be traveling for a long time in the near future, I may not eat the day before the, the flight just because of the unknown. So, you know, it's an awkward uh, thing that happened. It's an awkward thing to talk about, but uh, it became a reality and it's something that the media is loving to hit on here. This Somebody week. put on uh, social media that Delta is going to prohibit anybody from eating Mexican food within 12 hours of a flight. That probably won't solve the the problem but you know as you can imagine the social media is just having a blast oh with yeah this one. yeah some a blast a true blast something to lighten it up <laughs> and now it's time for travel week in review paul's going to share with you some of the highlights of this week's uh travel week in review sent out every friday to a hundred thousand people paul what do you got cooking yeah so every week i just try to find some of the hottest topics that we've got in regards to travel that are out in the media and just want to hit on a couple. So if you want to get more details or the exact articles, please uh, go and check out the Travel Week in Review, which you can uh, subscribe to on our website. Uh, big one here in the last couple of weeks in regards to traveler rights came with American Airlines being hit with the largest ever tarmac delay fine. So a 4.1 million fine was assessed to American Airlines because they held people on planes for longer than allowed by law. I think it's three hours, and I call it hostage. They took those passengers hostage, and can you believe it? It was like 110 degrees outside or yeah, something. Yeah, it was 43 different flights between 2018 and 2021 that this uh, that this is in regards to, with a total of 5,821 passengers that were impacted. Now, when you read the actual story and get into it, Looks like the attorneys make more money than the travelers do on this thing when it's all said and done. But uh, at least there's something being done and somebody that's actually standing up for the traveler. You know, I always wondered why they would allow that to happen. And the one thing I'd learned is when the door is shut, the pilots are getting paid. And so are the flight attendants. When the doors are open, they're not getting paid. So that's why they're holding people hostage out on the tarmac, shame on you, American Airlines. Yeah, and unfortunately, they're not the only ones that have done it. They're just the ones that have made the headlines this week. So the next one uh, that I felt was worth uh, bringing to the table today, just very quickly, and this is one because there's always something that I get on an airplane and I'm like, really? You think that that's something that should be done on an airplane? So 15 airline etiquette tips. So the first one, and this is always the one that just even anywhere in the airport, out in public, avoid PJs. Wear real pants on an airplane. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, mind your personal space. You don't think about, you know, you're in this limited area and, and you got to, to share it with strangers. So, you know, be very aware of you and what you're doing that's going to have an impact on those around you. Know the armrest rule. So... Get the details of this, because if you're in that middle seat... Is that first come, first serve? Uh, it's not first come, first oh, serve. Okay. So know what the standard armrest rules are. Leave pungent food in the airport. Yeah. Don't grab that and bring it on the plane and make it so that your neighbors are having to... I see them bringing pizzas and everything. It's uh, amazing. Pizzas, Mexican food, other, other types of foods that are even more pungent. So uh, use your headphones. You know, the reality is a lot of what has an impact on you on that airplane is due to the noises and things going around. So cut yourself off from those annoyances. Don't ever argue with the crew. You know, people don't realize that the crew has the power to do so much. Yeah, that pilot can it has more power than the president of the United States. On that airplane. They can put you in jail. They can. So don't ever argue with the crew. Wait your turn. You know, this is just another uh, basic rule of... Common courtesy. Uh, yeah, common courtesy is, you know, 
we're all going to get there at the same time. So <laughs> there's no reason to, to get pushy or jump the line. I got a chuckle getting on the flight this week. This one guy allowed me, said, hey, go ahead of me. I said, no, you go ahead. You were here first. I said, we're all going to the same place. He chuckled, and it made, it, made my day and made his day, too. <laughs> Very good. Uh, always be aware of your fellow passenger's body language. You know, I think we live in this world where – Everybody's got something going on. So, you know, you can see somebody that's having a bad day or you can see somebody that may want to engage with you. But, you know, pay attention to what others have going on around you so that you can cannot cause for challenges. Next one. And this is another one that uh, uh, can, can be very bothersome. Skip the perfume and cologne but not the deodorant. Uh, so amen. <laughs> there's only so many smells we need on a small metal uh, container that's flying through the air. Um Next one, the plane, the airplane is not your office. So you don't oh. need to pull out everything you've got, do all your work, talk on your phone, and let everybody else into your business. Uh, know where and how to recline your seat. Oh, man. This is always one that gets those of us that are over six foot tall, and when somebody puts that seat back. Um, yeah, I don't even put my seat back anymore because I know how miserable it makes me when the guy in front of me puts it back into my face. And that's what with those of us that are impacted by it, we realize that. And so we're very sensitive to it. But actually, the proper way to do it is to actually ask the person behind yeah, you. That'd be nice. Make sure that they're not eating something and doing that where you're going to have an impact on that. Before Let's you do be it. polite, folks. Yeah, yeah. Um, skip the clapping. How many flights have you been on where after a landing... People on the flight start clapping. The pilot can't hear anything that's going on back there. <laughs> the crew's there to keep you safe. Yeah. We don't need to be clapping. All right. Uh, keep the personal grooming to the bathroom. Yeah. So the airplane is not the place to cut your toenails, oh. uh, cut your hair, do any of that stuff. Uh, keep your shoes on. This is one where I saw a, a dip, different article this last week that actually showed a picture of a guy's bare feet on the armrest of the lady in front of her. Oh and my there's gosh. nothing uh, that just makes me cringe to think yeah. that somebody could think that that could be proper on an airplane. And then the last one, and, and if you're a parent and you've flown with a young child, I'm sure you can relate to this, but you know, be an adult and don't get upset over a crying baby on an airplane. There's nothing. The parents don't want that. The baby can't control it. And it's just something that, uh, that, that happens. So those are the two of the, the five that I had in the uh, Travel Week in Review that went out last Friday. You can get more information in depth on those if you go check out the, uh, the, the newsletter itself. And we'll bring more to you next week. Now we have this week's travel tip of the week. This one's for business travelers, Paul. If you're going to a convention, always stay at the convention hotel. I know in the past I've tried to save 50 bucks. I'd stay at a hotel down the road. What I find is by the time I go to the hotel, I want to go back for lunch and do some work. I, by the time I pay taxi fares and uh, 22 minutes it takes to get to the hotel, I just wished I'd have stayed and paid 50 bucks more to stay at the convention hotel. I think it's always a good thought, and it's nice that people are trying to save, but it usually never saves at the end of the day. And I think especially for domestic, I think those are, are key points to that. But internationally, it's that much more important just so, you know, if you do need to go while you're getting acclimated and take a nap for an hour over that lunch break, you can do that and uh, and get situated. So you know, I think, uh, yeah, you know, it's something where if you're trying to maximize whatever that uh, can convention is that you're traveling for i've never had a time that i regretted staying at the hotel that the convention was being held at that's for sure thank you for joining us on this week's weekly travel alert podcast don't forget to like share and subscribe also add any travel related questions below and we can incorporate those into a future episode take care and we'll see you next week